Hello everyone, this is Elad from Astrolabe Diagnostics, and today I would like to talk about spillover in mass cytometry or site of data. Spillover refers to a technical artifact where the signal from one channel interferes with another channel. It is a well-known issue with flow cytometry experiments where compensation is often used to deal with spectral overlap between channels. In the context of mass cytometry, or CITOF, although it is well established, it is not as well known or familiar to various researchers. These two papers from Takahashi et al. and from Chevrier et al. mapped the spillover in mass cytometry experiment, and one notable figure from the second paper has this table where the authors used single marker samples to create the ratios between the different channels and the kind of spillover that you expect to see. I'm going to demonstrate spillover with a very nice data set that was generated by Professor Adi Brahman at Iacon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. In this data set, uh, a sample was split into 10 different tubes, and in every tube, CD45 was conjugated to one of 10 metals, ranging from a mass of 113 to a range of 198. Looking at these masses, there are two potential sources for uh, spillover in this data set. One between 113 and 115, which are adjacent in their mass, and the second between 159 and 175 due to oxidation. You will notice that there is a 16 mass difference between these two. So let's load this data into Flojo. And I'm going to start by looking at 131 versus 154, which are two masses that should have no interference. And indeed, you see very nice distributions for the single positive cells, several events which are double negative, and a handful of doublets which are double positive. Very clear negative signal and no correlation between these two channels. However, I'm now going to look at 113 versus 115. And when I do, you will notice a few things. First of all, the negative on 115 and the negative on 113 are much higher. This is because signal from the other channel interferes. Additionally, there is a clear positive correlation between the two channels, unlike before where they were uncorrelated. In fact, the spillover here is so bad that if we change 115 into a different channel, such as 141, we are going to see a trimodal distribution for 113. These are the 113 positive, these are the 113 negative, and these cells over here are 115 positive. However, due to spillover, we see some signal in 113. This is fine as long as you know that every channel has exactly one CD45 marker in it. However, if there is biologically, biologically meaningful markers conjugated to these masses, uh, it could interfere with your data analysis quite significantly. Let's have a quick look at 159 versus 175. And although the spill over here is not as bad as before, you can still see that the negative on 175 is influenced by 159 and you can see a bit of a correlation between these two uh, markers between these two channels. Thankfully both of these papers include suggestions and methodologies to deal with spillover. The first paper by Takahashi et al focuses on panel design and acquisition. The second panel by the second paper by Chevrier et al uh, offers a uh, a computational approach and specifically an analysis package called Catalyst, which can be applied to mass cytometry data and try to factor out the interference. So with that, I will thank you for your time. Please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to our LinkedIn page if you like this video and you'd like to receive similar news. Finally, if you have CITAF or Aurora or any other data that you need help analyzing, please reach out. We're here to help. I'm Elad at astrolabediagnostics.com.